want a gram. Man, I should have want a gram. Should have want a gram. Real. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Grammy Grab Fest. That's right. This is the podcast where we sit down and talk about the Grammys in the 80s for 80s Reboot Overdrive. We talk about what the Grammys got right, what they got wrong, and if we had voting shares, who we would have voted for. I am Jesse Jackson, and my partner in all things music is the lovely and talented Rosemary. Thank you very much, Jesse. How are you this evening? I am great. Uh, we just spent um, almost 10 minutes talking about Rosemary's going to Emerald Comic Con this weekend. Yay! <laughs> so she is, I was giving her advice and uh, telling her to relax and have fun. So that's going to be great. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah. Um, so um, do you have any remembrance of this, um, the Grammys? This would have been for the year. We're going to up to 1982. Uh, mm-hmm. They would have been given around, given um, in February of 83. Right. Do you have any memories of that? No, I do not. Because okay. <laughs> I was still in Germany and I didn't get back. Uh, until April. So, yeah, so I was still there. But, you know, bits and pieces kind of waft through the airwaves. And uh, usually if we were listening to Armed Forces Network or something like that, then, you know, we would have heard something about who won, who didn't win. And then they would proceed to play the, the songs were the favorites and songs that, you know, maybe didn't didn't do so well, but they were still popular with the listeners. So, okay, um, there was not, uh, you know, in doing my research, there was not a massive overall winner this year. Mm-hmm. There was some diversity. Yes. So, uh, you know, because sometimes it is the year of someone. So Mm -hmm. we will start, as always, on the award for new artist. And the nominees were Asia, Mm -hmm. Human League, Jennifer Holliday, Stray Cats, and Men at Work. Now, the first thing I'm going to say and then I certainly want to hear what you have to say. As I went, men at work, pff, boy, that was a flash in the pan. So <laughs> I specifically went to Wikipedia and looked up, and I went, holy moly, Colin Hay? <laughs> I didn't know Colin Hay sang Lean for Men at Work. I love Colin Hay. He's You're one funny. of my favorite voices. <laughs> so... um so okay i'm a little embarrassed now so then i went okay well all right um okay so asia you know asia Mm -hmm. that's a spare band so then i did the search for that and um they were one of this um kind of combination bands where Mm -hmm. um the bass player, John Welton, was from King Crism, uh, Crimson, okay. Roxy Music, Uriah Heep, Steve yeah. Howe was from Yes, yeah. Jeff they Downs was like from Yes and the Boogles, and Carl Palmer from Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Amazing. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I probably knew that, but I had moved on since then. Um, yeah. So you're like, okay, well, they weren't spare. Um mm-hmm. You know, the Human League is still going. Yeah, they are. You know? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went, I know um, Jennifer Holiday and Absolutely mm-hmm. Dream Girls Broadway. Mm-hmm. And then Stray Cats. Um, you know, that, while they may not be uh, doing much now... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, well, but stray cats with Brian yeah, Seltzer. Yeah, Brian Seltzer's continuing. So yeah. I was kind of once again 
pretty decent choice of new artists. So what now that I've gabbed on, what do you think? Well, you know, I I looked at this earlier and uh, I thought, <laughs> nice, Minute Work. Totally loved Minute Work when they first came out. They had such energy and video presence and musically they were great lyrics were always you know just a little offset a little off kilter colin hay i think likes to use a lot of humor in his uh songwriting and i don't know i honestly i can listen to him all day there's just so much you know depth to their stuff but you don't catch it right away mm-hmm. you know just even listening to you know the the very one of the very first hits that they had down under you know it's pretty much you know talking about you know that's australia this is you know where they're from and they have uh obviously a love for where they're from most australians do mm-hmm. and um then they went on to do other things when I was trying to think one of my favorite ones of theirs. Um, Be Good Johnny is a good one. Uh, Down by the Sea, that's a really good one. Um, but they had one, um, and I'm not, I don't have Wikipedia up in front of me, but they had one that they were talking about, you know, something. It was a shame that. Um, you know, everybody wanted to get into the bomb race and, and you know, resolve all their differences with nuclear weapons, you know, and it just, you know, they had, they just really had a lot of political and social uh, outcries through their music. And they just, you know, to me, they, they deserve to win this. They really did. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Colin Hay um, is someone that I did. I I've certainly remember Men at Work and remember their songs. Um, and then, uh, you know, Colin Hay um, has one of my favorite modern songs, mm-hmm. uh, Waiting for My Life to Begin. Okay. You know, it's just this I love that song and I love his voice. Um, so very, very cool. Um, yeah, I think I, I agree with you. I think the, especially the way he has kept things going mm-hmm. and, uh, but this is a, one of those where you say they were all really, uh, worthy of the nomination Oh, totally. and have yeah. all stood the taste of time, test of time, which is nice. Yes. I mean, you know, you can look at either one of them and went and say, okay, yeah, this is great. Jennifer mm-hmm. Holiday, oh my goodness, amazing yeah. voice, fantastic Absolutely. performer. Yeah. You know, and then Stray Cats, of course, and yeah, it's and, a mistake. That's the name of the song. Sorry, I had it was driving me crazy. It's a mistake. Okay. Well, and you know, when you talk about Brian Seltzer Orchestra and stuff, I mean, he you know, in the eighties brought back that feeling of that rockabilly and, and yes, kind of, so yeah, I think really important. So well done Grammy. think they made the right choice, but even both in the winner and the nominations. So, definitely. all right. Yeah. So then we're going to move on to song of the year, which as a reminder is given to the composer who writes the song and this, um, they had, Paul McCartney for Ebony and Ivory, Frankie Sullivan and Jim Peternick, Eye of the Tiger, Donald Fagan, IGY, What a Beautiful World, David Perich, Rosanna, Johnny Christopher, Mark Janes, Wayne Thompson, Always on My Mind. Um, Any thoughts about that song? Then we'll talk about who won. Any about any of them? Um... I liked all of them. I mean, there really wasn't any one of those songs that I did not like. Right. Um, They all had really good airplay and meaning to them, each one of them. Um, I thought that they were all well-deserved. 
yeah, uh, to be nominated. I um I may say that Ebony and Ivory little too much of a message song. Uh but mm-hmm. Paul McCartney and um mm-hmm. Stevie Wonder performing together is, you know, great. Um mm-hmm. I the Tiger with the um Rocky Connection, great mm-hmm. song. To this mm-hmm. day is a wonderful song to have oh, like on a spin tape or when you're working out. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to look up the Donald Fagan song, and then when I played it, I went, "Oh yeah, of course." Gosh, yeah, how did I not was... know that? Yeah, like uh, oh. yeah. Then uh, Rosanna, uh, mm-hmm. Toto, just absolutely a classic song, mm-hmm. and um, and then always on my mind was the song that won, and. Mm-hmm. I do love that song. I love the Elvis version. I love the Willie Nelson version. I just think it's a wonderful, bittersweet love song. It is. It is. And, you know, later on, um, I'm not sure what year they did it, but uh, Pet Pet Shop Boys did an upbeat dance. Yes, they did. And it's just, you know, it still has the same meaning. Right. You know, and it has um, the same amount of strength to it. You know, it, it doesn't have that that melodic feel that Willie Nelson gave it. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of the forlorn, you know, maybe I didn't love you quite as often as I yeah. should have. You know, but it still means the same. You know, whether yeah. you're dancing or, you know, crying in your beer. Or, yeah. we've all we've all had those moments. You know, we've always had a, I wish I would have done this differently, you know, and Willie Nelson is due. He was totally due. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. I'm looking here um, that this was originally written like in 72. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, Brenda Lee recorded it. A Gwen McRae recorded it. Really? Uh, yes, and oh. uh, Wayne Carson, who is one of the writers, um, said that he wrote it in ten minutes in his house. And I don't <laughs> know if you know um, the famous Tom T. Hall quote. He said that um, "I love" is a reason why people go crazy writing songs. Because he, you know, his song, I love, Mm -hmm. you know, winners when they cry, losers when they try. Mm -hmm. Um, He said he wrote that in just like 10 or 15 minutes and it became a million dollar seller. Mm -hmm. And he said, and there are songs that he has spent months on that have never done anything. Yeah. Uh, Just sometimes magic, it catches. Um, Mm -hmm. Yes. And so it was really nice to see Willie uh, getting this mainstream hit. Um, Mm -hmm. The song is beautiful. Um, I remember the Elvis music video of Mm -hmm. a lot of home movies of him and playing with this, him singing the song, which Mm -hmm. was really, really um, great uh, songs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, But... uh, the winner was always on my mind. Do you have a disagreement? Uh, you know, I don't. I don't have one because I am going to stand by what I said. You know, mm-hmm. Willie had been in the business for, I don't know, about 30 years by this time. Mm-hmm. And he'd made some changes, you know. And he, um, I think he was, he was due. Okay. It was just like a resurgence for him, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, so he was well. It was well deserved. Mm-hmm. Good. All right. The um, next song uh, category is record of the year, and this is the artist. Um, often they mirror each other, but not always. Mm-hmm. Um, this year, the record of the year would be um toto mm-hmm. uh did rosanna joe mm-hmm. jackson stepping out paul mccartney stevie wonder ebony and ivory 
Vangelis, the theme from Chariots of Fire, mm -hmm. and Willie Nelson, Always on My Mind. Yep. So, Rosemary, tell me how you feel about the Chariots of Fire theme. Honestly, I've never seen the movie. Okay. But I know that I know that song. And it is so uplifting and so powerful. And it's just, it was written so well for the movie. And I just, I really liked it. I just really liked mm -hmm. how powerful it was, you know, how inspirational it sounded. Um, I love piano music anyway. So to right. have such a strong, you know, piano based tune, you know, for this movie. Uh, just to have it in general, for it to be nominated for a Grammy, I mean, that's saying a lot. You know, it just, it moves you to tears almost. It's just that powerful for something that's, you know, instrumental with no words. You know, mm -hmm. you can just see that the the composer's heart and soul was completely in this. Yeah, um, I am a fan of the movie. Um, it drags in a little bit. I've talked about this on a movie podcast, and we're talking about the 80s. Uh, mm -hmm. But there are scenes when uh, when they actually get to the Olympic Games that I love, and mm -hmm. some wonderful scenes. And it is a very inspirational kind of song, and they're you know running on the beach and such. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely worthy of the nomination. Um, so you ta I talked a little about Ebony and Ivory, about how I think it may not stand the test of time, but what are your thoughts? Personally, uh, Stevie Wonder and Paul McCartney are hit makers. Right. Paul McCartney, to me, is like the quintessential pop artist. I almost called him a diva there, but his songwriting quality is just hits. That's all he does. I don't think Paul McCartney wakes up in the morning and goes, you know, I think I'll write something crap today. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't know how to do it. I don't think. I don't think that's just something that's <laughs> rattling around in his head. So, yeah, I believe this was intentionally put together. I think it has a strong message. Mm -hmm. And... um Stevie Wonder, you know, the collaboration, and he's done several collaborations, Paul McCartney has. Yes. With quite a few people. And um, I think it worked. I think it worked for the time that it was made in. Okay. I don't know how it fares these days, but it's still a good song. Yeah. I, fair enough. Yeah. Um, all right. Talk to me about Joe Jackson. Um, oh, I will put my this. allegiance. Um, <laughs> I, when I heard, is she really going out with him the first time? <laughs> I fell in love with his voice and his mm -hmm. songs. And I remember buying the um, Night and Day CD mm -hmm. that had Stepping Out on it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and this was when Lynn and I were deep in dating. Mm. Um, and yes, we we played that cassette tape of this all the time. <laughs> you lucky man, you. Yes. <laughs> it was the very first time I heard the song. I was like, what? Who's this? What? Play that again. Of course. Uh, I was listening to it on the radio and I say fortunately or unfortunately and my very first copy of it was from the radio. I wasn't able to obtain an actual copy of the cassette or the album and I had created a mixtape of um, him singing Stepping Out. I think uh, Billy Joel was on there it was quite a few pop hits of the time. Yeah. Something that would catch my ear and I go, Oh yeah, I want that one too. But because you're recording off the radio, you, I, the last part of it gets 
cut off or right. I cut it off because it was a commercial or some nonsense. But I always loved, I don't know if we have time for a story. But no, I we one. always have time for stories. <laughs> this is means so much to me. Uh, Joe Jackson, I've listened to him for, you know, years now, and I just love his uh, slow song. is one of my favorites, my ultimate favorites, if you ever get a chance to listen to that. And he's just pouring his heart out, you know, and he's piano. He's a piano man, so I've got a, you know, a thing for piano guys, you know him, Billy Joel. Mm-hmm. And um, so the years go by and I'm still collecting. I'm always collecting music, always collecting music. Right. But I'm also wanting to see live performances. And I got an opportunity, my husband and I did a few years back. Joe Jackson was in Seattle. And I'm like, I got to go see Joe Jackson. If I don't see anybody else, this is my thing when I have to go see somebody. If I don't see anyone else this year, oh, I need to go see yeah. this person. So um, we get there, and he's at the Moore Theater, and I'm taking pictures of the bus that he came in on and taking pictures of the sign that says Moore Theater, and we go in. And so my husband and I are sitting there, and he's like, uh, so, he says, everything good? I'm like, yeah, I'm great. He's like, all right, I'm sure he'll be out soon. I'm like, okay. I said, um, care to hazard a guess what the uh, opening song will be? He's like, what do you mean opening song? I said, what's he going to open with? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, okay. I said, what's it going to be his encore song? He goes, oh, well. And he starts rattling off. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's going to be stepping out. He's like, honey. (laughs) Okay, he's British. Yeah, and that transferred over here to America, but he's not going to encore with Stepping Out. He'll open with Stepping Out. I'm like, no, he's not. So here we are in the theater arguing about what Joe Jackson's going to start with. And uh, so the lights go dim, you know, thankfully for us, you know, which like lights out, be quiet. Yeah. And he comes out on stage and there are like nosebleed seats, but I don't care. I could still see him and you know, everybody's, you know, yeah all this stuff and he's like hello Seattle and waves a hand and he's got two other guys he's a trio basically he's got a bass upright bass and he's got a drum person and the piano wow okay yeah so he sits down and he's going over and and he starts playing the intro to stepping out I grabbed Richard's arm and it's just like, right. And he's like, let go, let go. <laughs> I was like, I can't <laughs> help it. So, but there's two parts. There's the part to, you know, it's like the very beginning opening with the piano intro. And then there's a louder. So it's almost as if the audience didn't catch it the first time because he goes mm-hmm. back in to do it to start the song. The minute he played the second intro, the place erupted. People were on their feet. I think I screamed like a lot. It's just like, I could not believe this. This is Joe Jackson. I'm hearing Stepping Out Live. It sounds just like it did when I was years ago on the radio. And he was, he did. I mean, he wasn't like no fake mics, no synthesizers, no nothing. This was his voice. And he sounded amazing. And I just carry that in my heart forever because it's just like, it just brought it all together. You know, from those humble beginnings in my living room in Germany, <laughs> recording yeah. it off the radio, you know, to finally getting a cassette, finally getting a CD, and finally seeing it live. It's just like, man, I wouldn't trade that memory for anything. That is awesome. Thank you. Uh, it was you long. Know, Sorry, people. It no, was long. no, it, it is perfect. Um, you know, it's just, it's so wonderful. Um. Did he play anything? Did did you hear everything you wanted to hear? I did. I totally that's awesome. did. awesome. That is yeah. great. Yeah. Good. So that said, <laughs> would <laughs> Stepping Out had gotten your vote for Record of the Year? Yes. It, that would have got that instead of Willie Nelson always on my mind. Um. Well, for Record of the Year. Yeah, uh, which is the total. artist. That's the performance. Right, Toto won actually. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hands down. 
Mm-hmm. What, yeah. what were you going to say? Yeah, record of the year, I show always on my mind. Album of the year is Toto. We're still oh. on the single of the year, record of the year. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. Yeah, no. whoever, whoever okay. won it. You yeah. think Stepping Out should have won? Absolutely. Okay. Good for you. Um, <laughs> I probably, I, I have a really soft spot for Joe Jackson. I, I love, I just think he's someone that I just enjoyed so much. And I probably would have given that um, to him as well. And partly because I just loved him and I still do. And I'm now officially jealous of you that you got to go (laughs) hear him because that sounds amazing. Yeah, it was awesome. Totally awesome. Okay, so now we're going to move to album of the year. Uh, Nominees, Paul McCartney, Tug of War. Mm -hmm. John Cougar, American Fool. Donald Fagan, The Nightfly. Billy Joel, Nylon Curtain. And Toto, Toto 4. Um, so, um, I do not remember much about tug of war. Um, (laughs) I, you know, I remember the signal, but that's it. Um, do you have any thoughts or stories on that or? No, I didn't. Um, I had come out, had come out of, uh, listening to Paul McCartney. Um, my, in the 70s, I think I didn't really carry over uh, Paul McCartney. If it was, it was still the inception with Wings and everything, maybe not. Maybe the Wings was probably later, and he just reinvented yeah. himself as a as a solo artist. But right. no, I don't remember listening to this album at all. Okay, yeah, I I'm looking and uh, I remember the um, Stevie Wonder stuff, but that's about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Um, um so um American Fool originally came out as John Cougar mm-hmm. and then he later came back. Um mm-hmm. I remember that um couple of big hits off of it. Mm-hmm. Uh I have a good friend who loved John Mellencamp and mm-hmm. uh, listened to this album many times. Mm-hmm. Um, Hurt So Good and Jack and Diane. Yeah. Two big hits off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, any thoughts on it? Um, to me, John, and, and he'll always be John Cougar Mellencamp to me. Yes. Um, only because. And I mean that with all respect and love, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. He was a breath of fresh air, rock wise. Right. I just was really glad to see that rock was starting to take a more not that it wasn't serious before, but we didn't seem to be getting the meat and potatoes that we'd been getting from rock because mm-hmm. the seventies turned it into something sappy. And if you wanted anything harder than that, you had to listen to like Alice Cooper or Black Sabbath or something. You know, Aerosmith yeah. was doing a good job, you know, and Deep Purple, people like that. That's all well and good, but for for some of us that, you know, couldn't handle that <laughs> the hardcore stuff, you know, we still wanted the beat and we still wanted the guitars and, you know, we wanted to dance, but we didn't want it to be, our ears were bleeding and scared out of our wits. But uh, John Cougar was... Uh, I, I enjoyed him. I enjoyed uh, Hurt So Good, a lot of his little pink houses later on. Jack and Diane, to me, was kind of a, you know, that, that prude in me. Yeah. Rising up. <laughs> I wasn't yes. that, that crazy about, um, except where they went to the bridge. That was my favorite part of the song. Yeah. You know, but I understood it and what, mm-hmm. what they were talking about, you know. And never really been from a small town. And right. some of the, the lyrics were a little over my head, but. Okay. It was um, it was still a good he was yes, still was. a good artist. Uh how about Nightfly by Donald Fagan? I had no memory of this whatsoever. I do not remember owning the album. No. That's okay. another another one of those um I don't want to call it college rock because they'll probably hunt me down and shoot me, but Okay, yeah. It just wasn't my cup of tea. 
I mean, there right. was probably some stuff on it if I looked back on it, if I wanted to get Wikipedia out and go, oh, yeah, I know that song. Mm -hmm. But um, I like his voice. Yeah. I, I liked his, you know, work previously in the 70s. Yeah, yeah um, and, you know, this he, is the first solo album by Steely Dan co-founder Donald right. Fagan. So, um, yeah, I just was... I didn't get, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's wonderful, but I don't have any stories to share. Right. Okay. Uh, now, Nylon Curtain, however, um, always did love me some Billy Joel. Um, and when a new Billy Joel um, A-track, I guess, cassettes or CDs mm -hmm. came out, um, mm -hmm. I picked that out. And uh, I loved um, Allentown and mm. Pressure and uh, everything on this. Um, it's a good CD. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are um, certainly better CDs of his. Mm -hmm. um, and the next year when he did An Innocent Man is one of my mm -hmm. favorite Billy Joel CDs. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. you know, I, I certainly like this one. Yeah. Yeah. It had some good hits on it. Um, I don't remember owning the album. Yeah. But I do remember appreciating the songs when they came on the radio. Alan Tom, of course, being, you know, yeah. very poignant and heartfelt. And it's just, unless you've lived there, mm -hmm. you know, you, you wouldn't understand the plight. But it's... <laughs> You know, he, he always makes you think. I, li I like that about him. Yeah. And it, and I mean this with all respect and compliments, you know, it's Billy Joel doing a little Bruce Springsteen, you know, like My Hometown and Youngstown. And there's, you know, Bruce is mm -hmm. saying a lot of songs about mm -hmm. the middle class and struggling. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I think this is it. And it's really well done. Right. Yeah. Right. And we needed. We needed artists like this to bring us back down to earth. I agree. Because the 80s were very decadent. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of people, you know, yeah. that were like, live for today and, and, and all of this and buying fancy cars and watches and things. But there were people suffering out there, too. Absolutely. You know, and we needed people like that to bring us back. Him and John Cougar and Bruce Springsteen to bring us yes. back to reality. Absolutely. You know, yeah. And then the last um, record that was nominated is by Toto, Toto 4. Um, this, you know, I mentioned that it really wasn't a, um, a slam, you know, kind of mm -hmm. a year of something. But mm -hmm. in a lot of ways... Um, you know, Toto did receive six, this did get six Grammy Awards, mm -hmm. including uh, Album of the Year, Producer of the Year, and Record of the Year. Yeah. Um, I certainly remember all the hits and having the CD. Um, and, uh, you know, Rosanna, Make Believe, mm -hmm. uh, and then the big one, uh, Africa. Yeah. 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 Um, that was one of my mom's favorites. Yeah. Um, she was uh, in the Peace Corps, and uh, she was stationed in West Africa on the Banjul River. Mm -hmm. And um, I, let's just say I heard that song more times than I needed to. <laughs> but having said that, Mom, wherever you are, mm -hmm. um, that was her, you know, reliving her experiences and, yeah. you know, appreciating where she was and the opportunity that she got to serve her country through mm -hmm. the Peace Corps. You know, and uh, I was like, okay, sure, we'll listen to it again, no problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's a good tune, and it's and it definitely stood the test of time, that's for sure. Yes, absolutely. I um, I laughed at um, and I sent you the link, and I will include this in the show notes. Um, <laughs> Kristen Bell and Dak Shepard. Um, <laughs> he's been in a little bit everything. Uh, Kristen Bell it will be Veronica Mars for me forever. Um, is uh, they were married and they, uh, she they were going to have a baby and so they kind of did a 
big African safari vacation mm -hmm. and they filmed basically them lip syncing at different times the words to Africa. And yeah. then when they got back, they edited it together and it's scenes of them in Africa to the song, them um, lip syncing to it. And it is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Yeah, and they got some really good footage. They did. And so. uh, they did a really good job with the lip sync, I they, thought. Yeah. Dance skills a little dodgy, but that's okay. Yes, it Wasn't was. Wasn't a whole lot of dancing in, right. yes. in the original one. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So I will include that because I just love it. Um, let's see. Anything else from the ceremonies or... The thing, uh, live on the Sunset Strip, won for best comedy recording, and uh, that Richard Pryor, and there were, he came up against some really good ones. Yes, you know Bob and Doug McKenzie, the Great White North, who doesn't remember that from SCTV? Absolutely. Eddie Murphy, mm -hmm. George Carlin. Yeah. A place for my stuff. Yeah, that was one of my. my In fact, albums. um, I was a little surprised because, uh. I'm a big George Carlin fan, and I know uh, he was a great influence, and a lot of people mm -hmm. um, loved him, including uh, Kevin Smith and Penn Gillette, and they talk about – and I remember how great the his routine is about my stuff and the place for my stuff, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and I was a little surprised um, Richard Pryor uh, beat him out, though – Richard Pryor is all was always funny and so self-destructive that um, yeah. and I remember going to the film and liked it a lot. Um, Nobody was going to touch him that year. Yeah, absolutely. Not at all. <laughs> Best video, <laughs> Olivia Newton-John in physical. I know that was like one of the weirdest videos for me. Yes. Um, I just thought here. OK. Olivia, what are you telling us? You know, yes. we're, we're getting fit and we're getting physical, but wait, you know, there's guys in here and they're buff and they're all right. I don't understand you. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I totally agree with you. I'll listen to the song, but I won't watch the video because yes. I'm confused. Um, um, I'm looking at uh, best country and Western vocal performance by a female. And um, you look back on this. Now, you know, and who didn't know at that time, Juice Newton, Roseanne Cash, Amy Lou Harris, yes. Dolly Park, and Sylvia. And Juice Newton, to me, was such an amazing, she you know, she was a really good crossover artist. She could do either pop or she could do country, but this, yes. this particular song, Break It To Me Gently, man, I don't know how many shower walls i burst trying to hit them notes i'm telling you it was <laughs> that was such a great song and just to hear her you know sing it was so effortless yes and with such emotion it's just <sighs> you know sometimes you just you know singing in the shower is just basically what it's meant to be yeah you know? and, and uh, i don't I know I know. I totally agree. I loved Love's been a little bit hard on me. And mm -hmm. yeah, so Juice Newton, absolutely amazing. Uh, very cool. Good. Yeah. Yeah. There was another one, too, because we talked about Jennifer Holiday. Yes. Before. And I'm trying to remember um, what she was nominated for. I think, was it? She did end up winning a Grammy, didn't she? I'm talking to myself now. That's okay. Um, yeah, Marvin Gaye won uh, instrumental for, uh, for sexual healing. That was a great comeback song for him. Yes. I uh, did. Uh, best Rhythm and Blues vocal performance by a female. She won it for And I'm telling you, I'm not going. Oh, nice. And you hear her sing this, and you see yes. who she came up against. Patrice Russian, Denise Williams, Aretha Franklin, Donna Summer, Diana Ross, Diva, Diva, yeah. Diva, Diva, Diva. And I'm telling you, they all probably just went, child, take it. 
Yes. Ain't nobody touching you with that one. And I... then to see Dream Girls again, you know, the mm-hmm. the newer version and hear um Jennifer Hudson do it. Yeah. It's just like my god. You know, that's her it's signature song thing. and it is amazing. You know, and just to be able to have that, oh my goodness, you know, just anguish in the termination and just so, oh, I'm telling you, that's just like, yeah, take it, run with it. Yes, absolutely. You you won. <laughs> yeah, we're going to give it to you now while you're still singing it. <laughs> absolutely. Cool. Um, So, uh, thank you. As always, Rosemary, this is always fun. Uh, it's it's a fun little uh, every week we kind of go down uh, memory. And uh, thanks for sharing. Uh, next week, we're going to be thrilling. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> tell can't me. Wait, can't, can't wait. Yes. Uh, tell us how we can find you. I am at the 80s. I don't know. Where am I? I'm an 80s music girl on Twitter. I am on Instagram, 80s Music Girl, and I have a Facebook for 80s Music Girl. Very nice. I am at Jesse Jackson DFW. Um, I have, you can hear me talk about music on Set Lesley Bruce, which uh, Rosemary has been kind enough to visit um, often. Um, our main uh, Twitter is at 80s Reboot. So be sure and reach us there. That is our feed. Um, And um, for now, I think we're going to drop the needle and pray. So thank you, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. We hope you've enjoyed this show. This podcast is part of the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel on Southgate Media Group. You can follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at southgatemediagroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s.